let's go ahead and get started. Uh, anything to the agenda? Anything, uh, any modifications? I'm just peeking right now. Hang on. Yeah, good on the new business stuff. That looks good, Sandro. Thanks for calling that out. Um, how do we want to phrase, Jamie, um, the conversation about um, moving the location of docs.okd.io, the actual content, um, to an alternative location? Is that in the issues repo now as, as to individual issues? Well, there's an issue open for you to check with legal and whomever else at Red Hat to make sure we're not violating anything. So yeah. I there's, can, yeah. 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 If you could put that in the issues section and when yeah. Michael comes, because there's a little bit more to it than that. I just want to make sure it doesn't impact our um, access to the re documentation team's resources for building that, that it doesn't break their build chain or whatever, um, too. Hello. Hey, Michael. All right. Let's, let's drive on. All right, let's uh, bicycle on. So let's see, let me put in, uh, I'll put it in current projects. Um, the, uh, we'll put uh, uh, repo transition and the issue there. All right, welcome to the documentation, uh, OKD documentation subgroup meeting for November 30th of 2021. Please make sure you put your name uh, in the uh, attendance section so we know who was here and in case anyone that needs to get information listen here we know to get it to them uh, in terms of the agenda um, there's no updates on uh, in terms of current projects on the agenda uh, there's no update to the charter update and placements uh, I've sort of been plucking away at it and um, haven't really had time to complete that yet uh, name and scope of the install and README. We talked a little bit about that in the main group meeting. And I think that some of that sort of hinges on um, what comes out of the repo transition. And uh, uh, creating a build doc hasn't happened yet. Vadim has been out for the main meetings and, and otherwise um, uh, predisposed. Uh, the past couple of weeks. So once he frees up some time, um, then we can run by run some of the ideas that we have by him and then move forward. Uh, code of conduct, Michael, any updates on uh, changing any references uh, in the code of conduct to make it appropriate for OKD? Uh, no. Okay. And survey, I don't know if, is Driti on? I don't see Driti. And um, I would okay. like to, I'd like to also have Jamie and I have access to the username password for the Twitter so that we can announce the releases. So, because uh, Driti is on, um, I think Bangalore time or someplace um, okay. there. So the, there is, and I, I started the process, but um, I didn't get it all the way through with her to, to share that. So um, my ask of Driti, if you're watching this afterwards is to, um, Sure. if we can figure out a way to share the username password for the OKD repo with both Jamie and myself, then like when Vadim pushes out the 4.9 release, I'd like that to go out on that. Have um, the Twitter, yeah. The Twitter handle there, and, and I, yeah. I realized that I didn't have it. All right. Uh, but there was discussion on the survey at the main meeting. Folks are pretty much happy with it. Sounds like the question list is pretty much... Uh, uh, solidified at this point. Uh, so she's going to go back and rework all of that stuff and get back to us uh, when it is solidified. Um, repo transition. Go ahead, Diane, take it away if you have any news for all us. All right. Well, the legal has been eating turkey last week too, so um, I didn't get uh, uh, anything out of legal yet, but I um, asked, uh, was going to ask Michael um, 
Burke because one of the conversations we had at the last um, working group meeting was about transitioning the location of the content for docs.okd.io, not changing the URL or anything like that. But um, if we move where that content is into um, a new repo, uh, whether it's openshift.cs slash okd, if that has an impact on the build process for documentation, um, I, I don't want to mess up our relationship to the docs team because um, we like having our um, docs auto-generated off of the um, upstream content, but I wanted to make sure that um, our request to move the repo for OKD content, um, not OKD code, but the content, um, whether it's guides or website or documentation, would impact how you build um, the docs for us. Uh, inexpertly answering, yeah, I would say yes. Yeah. Um, does, Michael, how does that process work right now? So is it just going to ask that? that yeah. Yeah. So so the is it the files are generated and then committed to the docs uh, repo um, from a from another location, or they're written directly to the docs repo? How does that work? I'm not sure what you're asking. So when the when you generate the OKD docs off of the OpenShift docs, okay. is that a one write process? Like you're doing it directly into the repo where it ends up? Or are there more no. pieces involved, more steps involved? There are more pieces okay. involved. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so the, the build process in the, within GitHub. I believe. And when they get transformed, is that we apply a series of diffs or there's just word substitutions or? I mean, it's diffs. Okay. So can, can, I just, can I just ask, are we actually planning on transitioning the docs? Because at the minute, that's actually managed by a different process. And it's served from a different repository. It, it's served from a different yeah. mechanism that the OKD.io. We just have a link to the docs. Dot. It has its own identity outside of OKD.io. It's a separate web serving process. It's a separate documentation creation process. I I expected that that just was going to stay where it is because it's so tied with the OCP process. I think it is. That's that's what I'm I'm getting to the bottom of here because I, there was an ask to move the docs.okd.io content into the re, the repo that we end up in, um, you know where we move it to, and I want and that that set off a few alarms in the back of my head about process and builds and things like that. So um, that's why I asked Michael to come. This could be ignorance of my part when you talk about the moving. The content on docs is at the end product, the HTML yeah. pages, yeah. or the source. Well, that's an interesting question. So those, let me ask you this: uh, the new stuff that's the new there's the new document format, right? That just came out uh, yeah. that you're using. Um, is that rendered to HTML? Or is in in like is it rendered to a middle product and then rendered to HTML, or is it is it something that's rendered to HTML um, in in one step? I guess is uh, this point. is sort of asking the same question, but I yeah. I feel like. I don't know that Diane. I don't know that anyone. I think we can sort of cut this off at the chase because I don't know that anyone really wants to. It, it was it, the docs. Okay, well, I, that's what I thought I heard on the meeting last time, so I wanted to clarify I think, that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think any. I think because they are two separate systems, yeah. and I think it would be. Um, and the, there was a part two to the request that I heard at the the last meeting, and um, forgive me if I paraphrase this wrong. Correct me if I do. Um, the other part of the ask was, can we add um, into the docs.okd.io 
links back to the guides that are on in R there. So you have your regular menu system for um, docs.okd.io, which is to, goes to all the sections in the actual docs.okd.io, and then at the maybe in that menu system, add a link back to some of the guides that we're building in the make doc stuff that Brian's built out. Yeah, I, 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 I got the same impression. I think it was Christian when he was talking, he was sort of saying that we should put the guides within the docs. Yeah, that was that part was of what Christian was getting at. So in yeah. other words, Michael, it would be the, the stuff that we create yeah. Would it be possible to create, as you called them before, books? I don't know what they're called in the new uh, language of the new system, but create links to our external stuff within the OKD generated docs. Well, I know we could create a new book that contains all those links mm -hmm. and that put that book in the in the. TOC on the left side. I don't think we can, I'm not sure if we can link directly from that TOC on the left side to the but other it could be docs. A I'm book. not sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. That, that might be sufficient. Yeah. So I wanted to, I was trying to do this in two parts. It's like one, clear the air that we can't really move the docs. Um, we have to keep that doc structure there. But the other one was to embed somehow link back out to the OKD.io sites guides from the docs.okd.io. And if you can create um, a sample book um, in that, where we put those things, um, how do we maintain that um, book? Is that something we're going to have to ask of you every time we want to change a link or anything like that? Is there a way? No, you can just uh, generate a PR. OK. OK. All right, cool. Because I think that's, yeah, that's what I was trying to tease out here in this conversation was, um, the better way to go than try and ask them to break their build process or whatever. So, so what would be involved in 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 creating a book of of external links? So we just give you a list of external links. Yeah. Okay. We'll file a PR yeah, with a list work. of external links. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. PR an issue or something. Okay. Great. Right. And that's a PR against the OpenShift slash OpenShift Docs re uh, repo. Yeah. Yes. Make sure you tag it, or at least in the title, put OKD specific or something. I like that. The, Michael actually wrote up a little document about how to do that. That I think we have linked. Do we have that linked now, uh, Brian, in the website? Yep, the, yep. it is okay. in the website. How, how you raise a uh, an issue or a PR against the the docs, Documents. the official yeah. docs. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, in, in, in the actual site, OKD.io. I actually call OKD.io community documentation and the docs product documentation. So th th that's the terminology that's that's used within that site. All right, let's 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 use that because I feel like some of the time is spent sort of trying to decipher what we're talking about. So product documentation, community documentation. Let's move that mm -hmm. using forward to make things as, as clear that's as possible great. as to which documentation we're talking about. Okay, so task for us is for the um, for this group maybe at our next meeting, which won't be until uh, next year, um, to come up with a list of links. We will file a PR uh, or an issue with the docs repo uh, with those, and then Michael can then get those incorporated into the OKD documentation as a, a book. As a, is that actually the correct terminology still with the new I system? I think so. Okay. Let us know I if you I believe that's what we ones. call that. Okay. Cool. All right. So now moving on to uh, da, 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 survey repo transition. Are there any issues in the repo or um, well, it looks like I kind of broke this up, but I don't see any issues with the docs that came in. Oh, actually, there is low contrast for text and background. Sandra, do you want to talk about that a little bit, about what you put in? 
Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure if it's just my monitor, but uh, the, the contrast between the text and the background, it's really, really uh, narrow. Uh, I run um, a, a tool for testing for accessibility, the website, and it returned errors related to low contrast in several places of the website itself. So I would just suggest to increase a bit the, the contrast between the text and the background to make it easier for impaired people or with sure. uh, I think that's great. difficulties. Yeah, I think that's great. Now, did this? Did you try it with both theme settings? Because there's that little switch at the top. Um, yeah, I, I tried it with the dark mode and with the light mode, and uh, okay. they have low contrast in different places. Uh, I see. So okay. Depends on where you're looking at. Brian, is this something that you'd have time to look at the next couple of months, do you think? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's easy to change colors. Um, I, I'm not a web designer, <laughs> so oh, sure. I, I, I put the caveat there that I'm happy that if anybody wants to come up with um, color themes, font sizes, I can add them in very easily, but um, somebody with more of a UX um, experience I, should probably I, do that. <laughs> I could ask um, uh, Brandon Johnson, who's the contractor I have on on demand, um, to take a look at it and um, give a few um, maybe examples in the draft um, over the holidays, and then we could come back and look at it. It's a good thing. Um, people with disabilities or uh, visual impairments um, often say the same thing, so it would not be a bad thing to do. There might even be a resource inside of Red Hat. Um, uh, that, Michael, I don't know if you know of anybody yet, but um, I could ask who does that sort of thing to make sure our sites are readable. Yeah, that that would be very useful. Yes. Yeah, I had. I say, I'm, I'm happy to implement anything that they come and suggest, um, but I, I just don't have the tools and the skills to do that side of the UX design. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I meant more along the lines of so if you find someone or we find someone you can just direct them what to do, sort of. Yeah. Right? So I, what I'd like to do ideally is, Brian, have you sort of take point on website stuff, not necessarily doing the work, but in terms of getting people to the place where they can do the work, like, yeah. and, and helping us find volunteers and stuff like that. So consider yourself a web manager. How does that sound? Yep, yeah, that's fine. And the, the, I think the other thing that we've we put on to this meeting was the security. Um, right. And I'm I'm writing up something to to for us to post. Uh, I haven't finished it yet. I obviously Turkey Day uh, or Day of Giving uh, thanks as it is more for me. Um, uh, took a big chunk out of my time, but I plan on having that done before the end of the year. So we will have something up to address the security stuff. Um, there's, I've got a template, and then hopefully we can find someone that can like fill in the template. And our, our idea is to put out a call for volunteers to help be our like security person to check off the boxes basically from the template. Okay, and then the last one we. Um... We deferred the decision on inclusive language because Diane wasn't here last time just to run that, that by you. Um, so everything that we've, we've done everything we can for inclusive language, but there are still quite a few uses of the word master. And they really relate to the product because we control the control plane nodes, the master nodes. So there's usage like that, that still flag up in the in the tool, but we can't really do anything unless OCP decides to rename the control plane nodes to something other than master nodes. So I think we've done everything that we can from our documentation point of view, but it was just that there are still things reported in the tool, um, but we can't really do anything about it. And the other area was external Git repos that we link to still have the default um, branch called master branch, but again, the, they're out of our control. Or there are other repos like um, Vadim's 
um, install repo. And I think the OKD repo, the OpenShift slash OKD repo is still master. Um, but from a documentation point of view, we're, we're sort of clean in terms of things that we control. So are we happy with that or do you want to take further action? Was the decision so we put on? We're, we're never happy that. with that. Um, but I think that is, you've, you've pointed out, it is on the product side of the house. And I know there is an initiative to change that. I don't know, Michael, if you're aware of that at all, but um, I think it takes a little bit of time and um, probably more time than we'd like. So um, I will see if I can get an answer from the engineering team on um, when that, what that timeline is and bring it back um, to the group. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ryan, do we have a, a dedicated list like of these things that we could like just point someone from Red Hat to the list and say, hey, just so you know, there's these things. Yeah, so if you go into, if you actually go into that, um, so two or three, if you go into that issue, um, you'll see that I've, the scan returns 66 cases mm -hmm. and I've highlighted all the places where, um, so, I mean, I think we could put okay, something yeah. in our main meeting, because, I mean, if you look, three of those yeah. repos are OKD repos or community repos. And yeah. um, so they are probably things that we can influence, or, or two of them are. Um, obviously, we've got the library, we've got the OCP, and then we've, we've got our installer. So. Yeah. So, so um, why don't we do this? Why don't we just file issues on them? Well, yeah, is is that our problem? Well, it's no, no, no. But on the respective repos, though, if you file an issue, right? But what, what I'm saying is that, like, okay, so we're we're cleaning up all the OKD stuff, correct? Yep. And I think that's done. And uh, it, it really is a never-ending thing. Like the the Wildfly project uh, has, you know, master branch, etc. Um, I think that's a Red Hat thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every single uh, docs.okdio doc for every version, and let there's me, you know ten of them, me, um, and so on, so on. So, like you know, I would say push it to those people and let them clean up their things. Yeah, that's because we can't. We we don't have any control. Well, but over I it. think. I think opening an issue with those respective repos does that, right? Yeah. So right. Might, well, if we open one with Vadim saying, hey, dude, change this, he's going to change it. Likewise, if we open one up with the OpenShift uh, repo or the OKD repo, Christian or someone can bring it up, push it upstream, and try to get it addressed. Oh, oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm just saying that that uh, all, all these people have, have independent Red Hat direction to do that. So I don't think we need, as OKD, to push them to do that. I think the th the th was it three that are are in our control, like that Vadim could fix or that Christian could push forward. We could we could put issues there and tag Christian and tag Vadim and ask them assign it to them. Um, I'm Rich Bowen, who is in is a Red Hatter, who's one of who's the person who's doing the inclusive language stuff, um, has a master plan um, and has been working with the engineering teams to get this worked out. I just haven't seen a timeline for when it's getting done. I would suspect that there is out there somewhere already um, an issue logged against the OCP product repos to fix this, um, but I haven't seen it and I haven't found it yet, um, that we could add a comment on to um, rather than create open a new comment. Um, so. I think that might be the thing. There we go. Yeah. And then um, find, find the needle in a haystack, find the one for the um, overall product. And um, I'll see if I can dig that up and go fishing for that. And I, and I know that there was an overall scheme um, but that was probably six months ago when we brought this topic up the first time. I don't know what the date is on that issue, but it's it's an old one. So. 
didn't, I, I hadn't thought about it in a little while, so let me see if I can find Rich and find out what, what the, the prognosis is and timeline is. But we should fix what we can, and um, right, I'm pretty sure that there's a an initiative within the engineering term to, to fix that. It just impacts so many things. Excellent. Okay, so I'll raise the issues um, against the install, the community, and the OKD main repo, and then I'll close that issue for us. And then the last thing, it's not an issue, but it's a pull request. Um, we talked, I think, two meetings ago about that we do the reviews as to whether to accept pull requests mm -hmm. at this meeting. So I don't know whether we want to get into that now or we just want to accept this. This is one of Sandro to put the um, the content about um, how to guide for UPI for virtualization. Um, so again, I, I don't want the one to become normal business for us to review pull requests on the documentation and accept them, or you want me to do that work offline. Is that a question for me? I apologize. I was. Well, no, I think well, it's a question I, I, for I, all of us. I think I, I, you know. Yeah. Let, let's look at the. Let's actually bring it up, uh, and just know what we're dealing with here. So. Yeah, it was really just to get a community ownership because I mean I'm happy to go and accept it, but then it's my point of view of, of what's being accepted rather than the community's point of view on how our documentation evolves. So, so, Vadim, so that was really the... Vadim just looked at this like four minutes ago, actually, and put in some suggestions. Uh, I would say let's do this asynchronously. Uh, as opposed to this meeting, because it looks like it's actively being discussed as we speak, like literally Vadim just looked at it four minutes ago. So let's do this asynchronously, but let's get it done before the end of the week. Um, once everyone has signed off on it, then yeah, I'd say let's go ahead and incorporate it. Sounds good. So, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to push back for, do we want to have something? Like, are we going to assign maybe one or two assignees and let them do it just so it gets actually signed off? Because yeah, I'm, I'm I think aware. so. Who do we want from this group to to be uh, assigned to it? Well, I, I can be one of them, and when everyone else has approved it, I can approve it and push it because I have authority. I think that that makes um, sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to be the is... I don't want to be the point for everything, and I'm a, the point for a fair amount of stuff. Uh, you know, so let's have other folks jump in. And I so would say that Brian is the point on a lot of stuff as well. Sorry, Brian, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I did want to say no. Brian is the point on a lot of stuff too. We want to make sure that we get some more working group people so that it isn't just Brian and myself. And and I know Daniel has started to do some work too. So. So can I have one more volunteer, please? I sent the PR, so I can't be reviewing my own PR. So. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well. I mean, you know, because moving forward, it won't always be you. So, Sandra, let's go ahead and add you. That way, we've got um, one other person to help with doc. And you're, Sandra, you're very good with like documentation and and prodding us to get stuff in. So I think it'll be good to have you as an approver. Thank you. And I, I guess you can be added officially because you're a red hatter, so there's probably no no issue with you being added as an approver to this repo. Uh, I, I don't know, honestly, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think that should be a, a threshold for someone from community to be added there. As long well, as this is proven to this be... is a primary reason we're looking to move. So we have control over the mm -hmm. the, the approvals, um, and it, it, we're not bound by red hat process mm -hmm. um, for non red hatters. Um, if it helps, I'm in the OpenShift organization. So if you want to add me there, I'm okay. Okay, we can we can make that happen, Sandro. Yeah, I'll also look at it. I was actually looking for the. To find the issue on the repository. Uh, if you look at the PRs, 
if you look under PRs, it's it's under the PR. It's number two four nine. Uh, but but uh, but not not for the OKD one, right? Because I was there in there. It's OpenShift CS is the right. organization, and it's OKD.io is the repository. Um, I'll put it into the chat. Sandro, can you type in your, oh, there you are. Never mind. Looking for your GitHub ID. Too easy. Uh, Bruce, so are we good on what's, that? Any, oh. what's your GitHub ID, Bruce? Uh, BD link. I'll put it in chat. Yeah, you're not in the repo, so it doesn't like you. <laughs> okay, I can't assign it to you because you're not in the repo. But if you just put a review in, I'll I'll look for that and then. Um, okay, thank you. All right, very good. Anything else with that issue? All right, cool. Let's move on now to. Uh, we've got a bunch of new business that basically relates to the same thing. So my recollection was that basically we were going to work on 4.9 stuff and at the beginning of the year actually um, get it posted because we were going to have to write that stuff out. Um, so Sandra, we, we had a plan to do it. It's just uh, not as quick as what we would ideally want because this is our first time actually syncing up. Well, and that's not true. I think 4.4 or whatever, I think there was a big push to have things synced in terms of announcements via OKD resources and stuff like that. But since then, there hasn't been. Um, so this would be our first time actually like announcing. And so the discussion at the last docs meeting, I think, was like, okay, we need a list of features and things that we can we can forward the um, OpenShift stuff, but also write up some OKD specific stuff. Um, so that's where that is at for all of those. And I'm volunteering to write some stuff, and I don't know that anyone else has volunteered yet to help uh, write some stuff for this. Um, I got volunteered to do the overt, and somebody was volunteered. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Daniel to do the open stack. That's open stack. Yep. 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 So uh, Dan and I, uh, I think, are planning on doing the open stack deployment stuff because we've beaten our heads into the ground on it enough times now that we we kind of have a good grip on what you need to do for it. Yeah, so I gathered I gathered a list in the other um, uh, in the other meetings notes about just everybody who said they could they could do a thing. Um, so the next steps are how do I get in touch with people outside of these meetings? They don't all seem well, to be sort of black. They're not. So I responded to you a little bit in your in the chat when you asked me. Basically, we don't have a centralized like volunteer contact list so it's basically okay. the working group google group and slack right now and if we want to maintain a working group participant list then we could do that and we talked about this before it's just i haven't had the time to set up such a thing where basically we list everyone who's actively involved with the working group and what their areas of participation are okay i yeah i just didn't know if 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 such a thing existed um so um i had asked in the openshift commons um uh okd4 group could we have uh an okd guides channel made please um that seems like a reasonable place to coordinate that work 
I think, Diane, yeah, your lips are moving, on. but you're muted. Sorry. Uh, OKD-guides or guidance, which would you prefer? Uh, guides, I think, makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Do that. Now. And, and the, the other thing I would actually say is, let's use OKD.io. I would actually, I think that that's a good idea, is to actually have the discussions about the content on the the, the repo for the content. Okay, like then let's do that. That's fine. I was just looking for somewhere to organize it. Um, I would, yeah, I would say that would be the best thing is to start a discussion cool. there, and then people. Oh, if we're using there. GitHub discussions, we might also want to set up. If we know who the people are who are doing different things, we might want to set up. I think they're called teams in GitHub of like representing the individual subgroups in the working group doing different things, as well as a catch-all group to, to hit everyone. But but also as we make decisions, document it in, in the OKD dot documentation under the subgroups. So yeah. th that's where people should go and look for what the state of a working group is, what the projects are, that, that's what and it's I there for. That's why we change it to a dynamic content so people can easily make updates. Right, and ideally what would happen is that each subgroup, uh, their respective notes and decisions then get presented at the main meeting as a bullet item. So basically everyone's sort of checking in, each subgroup sort of checking in with where they're at. Okay. So you said on the okd.io repo, the guides currently live in OpenShift slash OKD. So, um, I guess we're moving. No, they, no, no, they don't. There are, they, they don't. They're gonna, yeah. They're so gonna let's get removed. Right. <laughs> who wants to? Who? I, I, I will volunteer to um, archive those somewhere. Cool. Where I'll should? Talk yeah. with Vadim, and we will archive those and remove them. Uh, and let's just get this done with. Um, yes, they are in the OKD.io repo. The, the, it, what so happened is this is just before OpenShift CS, OKD.io? Yes. yes, correct. Yes. 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 And that, that's where we're moving all of that stuff to. And then once we figure out whether legal will give us permission, we will put it in someplace public. And for folks that weren't at the main meeting, uh, we did register on GitHub OKD-project, I think it is. Yep. Uh, Timothy did from the FCOS group for us and then added myself as, and Brian, and I think a handful of other people, Diane uh, and Vadim as, uh, as uh, owners on it. And I reached out to the owner of the github.com slash OKD repo that is completely empty and been dead for mm -hmm. a long time and heard nothing back. So I'm also, there's a process in GitHub to ask for that back. Um, okay. We'll see if we can initiate that. I'll give him another couple of days and hit him up again. And if he doesn't respond or she doesn't respond or they don't respond, um, we'll see if we can get GitHub to give it to us too. An OKD project is fine as well. I just like short. Yeah, I do. I try to avoid dashes with things, but you know, it's kind of hard these days. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so let's try to direct subgroup stuff to, for documentation, uh, the OKD.io in CS right now. Um, and then at the main meeting, we'll have everybody. So, Daniel, at the next main meeting, if you could update us on where you're at with things and then moving on, we'll do that for all of the subgroups and Sandro, et cetera. So eventually we'll have like four or five subgroup updates in the main meeting. All right. And so Sandra, does that answer your overall, you listed the individual ones, but we are gonna be working on this uh, over the next couple of weeks. It just didn't come together as, as fast as as um, we hope it will in the future. In the very short loop, I would recommend to send out a, a, at least a Twitter line about the sure. 4.9 release. And if there is a way for a bigger banner in the homepage, just seeing 4.9 is out, that will be great. Okay, great, we can do that.
All right. And moving on now. That's actually everything that we have on the list. Does anyone have anything else they would like to bring up? Well, just to note that on the docs.okd, you know, we should update that so that we have 4.9. You know that that goes latest 4.8, and there's yeah. there's no doc that you pull up that says 4.9. So so actually, I, I, should I, ask, I don't even Michael, know what latest is. Okay, so hold on. So Michael, how do you get notified that? Well, I guess we don't. It has the process hasn't been defined. Has anyone actually said to you, hey, OKD 9. Point, or sorry, 4.9? Has been released. Can you update the docs? Has anyone, like Vadim or anyone, reached Vadim out? Vadim has Vadim in the past. Sent an email yesterday. Uh, right, but did he go directly to Michael or put in a PR anywhere or anything? Not that I know. Saying, he just sent an email. No. I yeah, know. I know he sends his usual email of, "Hey, this new version is out." So I think what we need to do then is, as the group, when we know that it's coming, make sure that Michael is aware, and then push a button and say. Yes, Michael, please do this. Like, update the latest. Yeah, please do. Put a PR in, basically. Yes, I saw that email, but it's, I couldn't remember if that was the first iteration of 4.9 or. Yeah. 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 And Diane, I think you're right in terms of defining a new release process. I think we're finding out what needs to go into it now, right? And then we write that out. I think what we're at right now, and I'll just say it out loud, is we're at a tipping point right now. We, we have enough people. Um, who really are using OKD, enough voices on these calls to actually not rely solely on Vadim um, to do awareness, um, to socialize new releases, and um, make sure the docs get updated. So I would say that one of the discussions we should add maybe to the, um, the repo is, you know, what is the new release announcement process rather than Call it release process because that might scare the bejesus out of Vadim. But um, announcing a new release, so we put out a blog, we do this and do that. You know how how we do that, and I think that's we'll use 4.9 to to figure out that process or what we what we want to do. Because like I was saying earlier about tweeting it out, posting it in a blog somewhere, um, and getting into the docs um, doesn't automatically happen. Someone has to remember to do it right now. So. I think we could take that on. I, I think there's there's two sides to that. There's the main release where when when there's a main 4.8 to 4.9, 4.9 to 4.10. But then I, I actually think that as we as the issue has been resolved, we normally have a fortnightly or a a, a, a frequent point release within the 4.x. So I, I think we should also have a release process around there just so people know that the next update has been out. Obviously, it's less of a, uh, a fanfare, but it, I think it still needs to be communicated. I think there's, I, and I, I hesitate to even say this, I think that that's actually what I was thinking in the release process for each new release, mm -hmm. because it's a sub-release for the night, like fortnightly. I almost think there's a way to automatically kick off a, um, a Twitter announcement um, to when the release is built. Um, that we could add sure. into the build process. I've seen it done something for other like an things. That pushes a message. Yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. So there, uh, there are two hooks here, something. right? Sorry, go, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, so there are two hooks here. One is the build process. The other is the OKD clusters have an uh, have a mechanism of checking for updates, right? Mm -hmm. We can hook into that. Uh, I don't actually exactly know what that mechanism is. Um, like, it, is it is it an RSS feed or or is it just they they ping an API that that we they could ping an API? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they're okay. consuming a JSON. So we could we could turn that into into release announcements if that makes more sense than than doing it in the pipeline. But I I like doing it in the pipeline as a as a push operation. Yeah, we could, we could talk. About chat with um, Vadim and Slack and somewhere and see if that's humanly possible. I, I've just seen it done for other, I can't even think of one off the top of the other, other release processes that it just automatically pushes out to Twitter. 
um, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. I think if we just document what we want, and then we can figure out um, how to get it, make sure things get in and don't get missed, and don't rely heavily on Vadim or whomever is in that role. Can we enable discussions on the OKD.io repo? I just realized that they are not enabled. I think you have privs to do so. Let me check and see. See if you can figure out how to do it. Um, if not, let me know, and then I'll figure out how to yeah, do I'll it. Yeah, I'll take back. a look uh, after this meeting. Okay, do we have anything else uh, on the meeting? No. All right. I'll try we have and a lot of work cut out for us. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, All right. Everyone. Talk Take to you care. soon. Right. Bye bye. You bye.